I have this friend. He's by far the most intelligent guy I know. He is a medical student and he studies neurosurgery. Uh, but he's also incredibly good at any other type of subject. And I've always been so envious of him and his brain because it just seemed like he had this great advantage in life, this natural talent to comprehend any type of information that was presented before him. But recently he told me that he's been feeling very stuck with his career and I thought to myself, how could he have any problems with his career if he knows literally everything there is to know about his field? And then he told me that it's because he's afraid to step out of his comfort zone. He's afraid that in a more professional environment, he would seem like the dumbest one in the room. And that's when I realized that the thing that stood between him and his success was his own fear. So it's obvious that one of our biggest obstacles in life is fear in many different forms, whether it's the fear of embarrassment, the fear of the unknown, the fear of uh, public speaking. Fear is what makes us um, prone to sabotage. So the main reason why we prefer to stay within our comfort zones is because we associate the feeling of fear with a very bad emotion. And often when we're presented certain opportunities, we'll reject them just because we want to avoid that negative feeling. But learning to overcome fear is a skill any of us can develop. So the fear response starts the region of the brain called the amygdala, and it works almost like an instinct. So from the time we're infants, we're equipped with the survival instincts necessary for us to respond with fear so we sense danger or feel unsafe. And fear helps protect us. It makes us alert to danger and then helps us to deal with it. And there are three main types of fear. So there's rational fear, which is when there's a real imminent danger. So, for example, when I see a man approaching me with a knife, I'm going to be scared because that may be a genuine threat to my life. So that fear is very much justified. Now, the second type of fear is primal fear. And primal fear is an effect of human evolution. Now, a great example of that would be the fear of snakes. Many humans are afraid of snakes. And that's because back in the day, the ones that were afraid of snakes and had a healthy fear of them were much less likely much, much less likely to be bitten by one than be killed by one. Therefore, they had a much greater survival rate. So, the third one is irrational fear. And irrational fear is the one responsible for self-sabotage. So, one half of your brain is scared, and the other part cannot comprehend why. So, irrational fear is basically the one that can be overcame. And now you may be thinking, great, but how do I overcome that irrational fear? So the most obvious way would be through repetition and constantly challenging your fear. That is how about 95% of the population overcame the fear of darkness. So I'm guessing most of you, back when you were kids, you were afraid of the darkness because you thought that there were monsters and ghosts lurking beneath your beds once the lights went out. But after a couple of dark nights, you realized that you were never greeted by a scary monster. Therefore, your brain made the logical deduction that there is no need to be afraid of the darkness because there is no threat. Now, the second way to overcome your fear is to try to redefine it. That works really well with the fear of failure. So, most of you probably consider failure to be an inability to achieve a goal of yours, right? And I would suggest starting to define fa uh, failure as not trying something new, as not giving yourself the opportunity to thrive and try something new and test your abilities. So I know this girl who, whose father always told her that fear uh, of failure was equal to not giving yourself an opportunity to try something and not being able to say, hey, I did that and be able to voice my opinion about it. And that girl, from a very early age, has been trying a bunch of different activities, and she's been developing a bunch of skills from a very early age, and that's um, how she realized what she was good at, what gave her joy, and because of her family's mindset, she was eager to test herself in new fields, even if it meant potential embarrassment, because she knew that she'd come out of it as a stronger person. Another piece of advice I could give you would be to create a fearless and this fear list would conclude of um, some fear setting scenarios. Um, so right now I'm going to ask you to think of an irrational fear of yours, whatever it may be. And then 
then think of the worst potential case scenario which could occur if you did try and challenge your fear. Once you've got that, try to think of something that you can do to prevent that worst outcome. And then, if the worst outcome did occur, what could you do to repair it? And then try and outweigh that with the benefits of the attempted effort. So we can use the fear of public speaking as an example. Um, the worst potential case scenario would be to forget your entire speech, right? That would be pretty terrible. But you could try and practice your speech, prepare it beforehand, and then hope for the best. But if that still doesn't work, then you'll probably be a little bit embarrassed, maybe disappointed in yourself. But that doesn't mean that you'd never be presented an opportunity like this ever again. It doesn't mean that you wouldn't get a chance to redeem yourself. So this exercise can help you realize that even though you may be feeling anxious, the um, walking away from the opportunity can cause you more harm in the long run. Now to answer my original question, is fear your best friend or your biggest enemy? Well, it can be both, and it all depends on you. If you end up confining yourself in your comfort zone, it's very possible that after living in that bubble of comfort for a while, you'll realize that you've never achieved any, any type of goal and you haven't fulfilled your dreams and you've missed out on all of those various opportunities. And that's when you realize that you completely sabotaged yourself because of your own fear. But it's never too late to try and take control of your own life. It's never too late to start challenging yourself and it's never too late to try and overcome your fear. And that's when fear becomes your best friend. And you start treating it as a source of motivation. And when you try to associate it with a positive emotion. Learn to embrace it and just let it help you thrive. Thank you.